People deluded, I'm back again. Look who's joining me, the pigeons. They're probably gonna run up on me again, but I'm in Soho Square and I've got some things to speak about people. Um, first and foremost, obviously, you've seen us linked with the Ukrainian centre half, Mikola Matinyenko, I cannot pronounce his name, but allegedly, Arteta recommended the signing of him to Manchester City um, a while ago and he's been lobbying to sign him for over two years now, people. Um, Apparently Arsenal's coaching staff have reached out to a Ukrainian specialist to know more about the player off and on the field. Obviously, probably a lot of that's his personality. How resilient is he when faced with difficulty? And all of these things that relate to looking like a foot to relate to assessing a footballer beyond his obvious skill. If, if Arteta has recommended him and does genuinely want him, then I'm all for it. More so because we need a centre half. And if it's a player he's wanted and whatnot, people, he's more likely to do that. I go and do that big man. I'm not on it today, man. Banter SI, come on, keep it moving. Thank you. Good ass pigeon, man. Rats with wings twice. About to swear there. But moving on, people. Like I said, man, hopefully we get a centre half because we're almost at the end of January and there's still not a centre half or two to come in. And listen, it's, it's a joke thing, man. You're hoping Francis Cahigio with the signing of Martinelli, he can do something for us in South America. But who knows? Bruh. Alright, cool. They must have pigeons, pigeons found someone else to run up on, so I'm, I'm cool, people. But moving on from that, people, um, in relation to the Mallorca interest, um, Makola interest, Makola Mavinenko's interest, apparently our interest has substance and that Arturo Canales, who is quite close to Raul Sanye, is representing Arsenal in the negotiations. So did Arteta genuinely want him? Are we just levering, leveraging sorry, agents, contacts and good relations and, or things, and things like that? I guess as a fan, we'll never know. Moving away from that, and I've made a video and you've all seen already, Ceballos allegedly wants to terminate his loan spell at Arsenal, which is a shame because he hasn't been allowed to show anything he can and he hasn't shown it. But apparently he wants to keep it moving. Valencia are interested in him. And Real Betis are interested in him. So these are teams in his homeland. If he does rip up the agreement, that will allow him to, I guess, flourish in similar surroundings because the Premier League experience just hasn't worked out for him. And probably Arteta probably just doesn't rate him, to be fair. He probably recognises he's, he's tactical good but he's just not his cup of tea or he just doesn't see the need to make him as vital to the side as he as he might many people myself included would say if Sabaos is fit him and Ozil should fight it out potentially Sabaos get a look in because he hasn't been presented with that but who knows at this moment people and people are just feeding these pigeons wow it's like the attack of the flies and that but moving forward um, Burgess, a former, you know, you know who Burgess is, a former staff in terms of our medical staff, former Australian, former Australian staff member who left us. Um, he's had some interesting words and I've kind of paraphrased some things he said. He said, the club identified two areas in which they needed to try and regain an advantage. This was recruitment and performance. Um, the idea was that Sev, obviously he's referring to Mislintat, would identify the best young talent and me, and, and me and the head of the um, head of performance department would develop them. And he also gave some. What I like about Burgess, you don't always find this out. He wasn't afraid to have difficult conversations according to players' performance levels and if they're you know showing their best and whatnot. Um, and he's also gone on to say, in relation to Arsenal, the players often ran the place. Many of the performance staff had been in place for some time and developed relations with members of staff that were a little too cosy. So again, we needed to sharpen up the environment. When you're too cosy, it runs the risk of complacency. And obviously where we was as a football team, this was very much it. And obviously the biggest factor is what we have done off the field, whether it's bringing in the right individuals, getting rid of previous managers, identifying coaching areas. When we look past that, how the players' mentality has been in training or just in general, similar to what I said in the previous vid, it's been a bit too easy for years to play for Arsenal and United and these fallen giants of sorts, Arsenal specific to this, and this kind of backs it up. Um, he also offers some, what I found interesting, he said, a lot of clubs, masseurs and physios in particular, as they spend a lot of time with players and provide them some relief, can develop really strong relations that can make it a little bit hard for people, doctors, physios and other therapists to have really difficult conversations. Of course, if you're friendly with someone, some people don't want to upset people and that's why you have to value people that are harsh but fair in life even more because it's difficult to have these conversations, people. Um, moving forward, he said, I think there was a reluctance of some people involved to use hard training as protection and so instead they do more rest and recovery. Why? Because that was the easy option. It's easier to sell players in particular. He's gone on to say, 
essentially there's been a, a fair bit of research that shows if you can build up players resilience to hard training that the impact of games becomes less and less and your body becomes accustomed to it one thing that Wenger was amazing at is that he stopped any external therapist being allowed inside the club unless given the green light by us. Arsene was adamant that once you start doing that, it's like a cancer in the place. Um, he's gone on to say, it's like a cancer in the place. So certainly in the first year at Arsenal, that wasn't a problem. There was a really good example. Um, he's now spoken in relation to injuries. He said there was a really good example at Watford in my first year. At halftime, Danny Welbeck had completed 479 metres of sprinting. I remember that number distinctively. Now his average, now his average for a whole game at the time, obviously people was about 400 metres. So he already beaten that. And lo and behold, in the second half, he gets injured. Once you get close to your game average, particularly on metre sprints, that really puts you in a high risk scenario, whether that's in training or a game. And the red zone could 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 be across a game week or month. If you're approaching or above your previous week, previous month or previous game, particularly on sprinting danger, sprinting distance, sorry, that puts you in danger of a muscle muscular injury. So again, obviously, with it's, that's smart because obviously he's not here anymore. But is there certain things that other staff have picked up when Burgess was here that can help us? Because obviously Arteta's brought in his own staff and he would need to because I'm no physio or whatnot. But you can already see high sprinting, high demands. We're blowing after 60 minutes. So we need to be able to come accustomed to that. We need to become better at players recovering from that. And we've also got to be able to, you know, because players have got to be able to play at that intensity next season three, two to three times a week or, you know, three to four times in 10 days. I don't know the schedule is. And you You've heard, you heard um, Klopp when he first took over Liverpool. It really took him a while to get everything going. But he said, I remember in his first year there, he's like, it's going to take us a bit, about six months to make any real progress in terms of the high intensity. So we need everybody on the same page. Obviously, Burgess is not here anymore, people. And in relation to leaving, he said, as soon as he was leaving, I recognised a possibility. He's speaking about Wenger leaving. When Sev left too, I became more vulnerable. We, we'd come in together. When Emre arrived, um, he was unbelievably thorough, an absolute workaholic. Emre brought with him his own st strength and conditioning coach and apparently people, again this isn't his words, but apparently obviously Emre's strength and conditioning coach clashed with Burgess on a regular basis and what Burgess had to say about that is one of the things that I guess I wonder whether I might have done differently is that I was brought in and at, at a director level. So in theory, the job could have been turning up in a suit and taking a broad overview of things. Arson had wanted me on the grass and I felt it helped me affect a change and take difficult decisions when they have not when they might have not otherwise been made. And then back in relation to Unai people, he said Unai brought in his own staff and his own methodology and his own team and said, Is there the this is the way we're doing things? And that led to me and Julian butting heads a bit. If I'd taken the suit and tie route, it wouldn't have been a, a it wouldn't have been my battle to fight. And that's true, and that's someone that hands on, someone that cares about just, you know, someone that wants to do his job with integrity. It doesn't matter about Arsenal and all of these things. He's a sports performance sort of done. He wants to make sure that everything's been doing right, people. He also, I haven't got copied and paste, but he also referred to that Emery, more or less, from the impression I got from what I read, Emery was of the thing where we're doing our training. If you believe that there's some more stuff we can do, then you're free to grab the boys and do that, but I'm doing my thing first. Um, and he went on to say, and he went on to speak about um, Xhaka as well, people, but before that he said, um, by all objective measures, things were better than the first year, were even better than the first year. According to Opta, Arsenal players covered 4,310.14 kilometres in the 2018-19 season, the most of any Premier League team. Crucially, their high-speed running was similarly intense. It was particularly satisfying to achieve these results with a squad not renowned for their physicality. So again, the data shows that we've made an improvement, but the eye test knows that it weren't there. What I liked in relation to Xhaka, he said, um, a captain, he said, his attitude to training, his attitude to work is exemplary. He's very, very comfortable having difficult decisions and conversations with staff, players and coaches. If he doesn't believe in something, he'll tell you. And often that's a rare quality. He trains really hard every training session. He rarely misses games, rarely misses sessions. He's a big personality, a big presence. And you see why he's been named as a captain at Arsenal. And why not just Burgess, but this, these same, regardless of what you think about Xhaka, these comments seem to be shared universally. And he is a brave individual. Whether that's just how his makeup is, whether that's his upbringing, whether something in his life has forced him to do that, or that's just him, is another thing, people. Um, he said in relation to Obama, and he said, um, he said he's the only person he's seen move similar to Fernando Torres. 
Um, he said, for someone in my profession, to walk, it's a joy to watch him because particularly in the straight line, the speed is electric and the ability to repeat that consistently over games is outstanding. He also said in relation to Ozil, he said, Meza is much more, is much more maligned physically but there were many games where his running numbers, and I'm talking high speed running numbers, not just the distance, but high speed numbers, were among the elite in the competition. So certainly he's capable of doing that. Am I missing anything else out? Um, and he, yeah, so that must, I don't know. I mean, you know Ozil works hard and he tries hard statistically, but again, I get, well, I'm not gonna get into it, but it's, we all know Ozil statistically he's high up there, but in terms of the eye test, does he always meet it? Not, but it does, kind of squash on his head running for the sake of running and for me away from what you think of Ozu how I believe Britain has a culture with passion for the sake of passion obviously we like fight we like commitment we like passion but I do think only English Premier League fans or especially people born in England and whatnot we like passion for the sake of it it's very much a culture thing I'm not using this to praise or critique Ozu but you look at Ozu you look at Berbatov you look a bit more of these continental figures they're not running for the sake of running their outlooks are a bit different um, and whatnot and in relation to how cutthroat the world is, people, obviously when he left Arsenal, technically I think your status gets revoked in England. And he said, when you're a foreigner and you get sacked, you have 60 days to leave the country. Your children get ripped out of school, which is mad, people. Like, he's got 60 days to sort himself out and go elsewhere. I think he's since moved on to, I think, the Australian national rugby team. And like you've seen, these individuals will leave clubs and be brought in each and every time. But... Yeah, it was just some interesting comments and I thought I'd share that with you people. So we'll, I guess we'll see Sabahis' situation sorted out. And yeah, we'll see what happens with that centre half. But for now, my lunch break is over. People, God bless DG.